What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And the Giants are through two days of training camp, have had some really exciting practices. I'm sure that many of you have been attending those practices. Alex and I, we cannot, but we're closely following along here on Twitter and social media, watching all of the exciting plays from di different Giants players who are starting to stand out through two days of practice. And today, we're going to go ahead and recap these two days of practice, discuss who is standing out, who's making those big-time plays, what are we seen from afar over at Giants practice and what are the main takeaways that's what we're going to break down in today's episode but before we dive into all that make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode subscribe to the channel if you are new ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section if you're listening on Apple or Spotify please make sure to leave us a five-star review and go ahead and follow us on social media at Fireside Giants but without further ado Alex how are you feeling after two days of Giants training camp I'm doing great, and I'm really excited. We're hearing some really good stuff coming out of camp. Two days already. The offense has been churning. DJ's been slinging. Waller's been catching. Saquon's been running. I mean, you telling me. It seems like the offense hasn't missed a beat. And in fact, they've actually added a couple beats, you know, added some really nice talent here. A lot of the guys that we haven't seen yet in this offense have been getting involved early. You know, guys like Waller, guys like, uh, you know, High. I know he left practice yesterday because of the kind of heat issue, but it seems like he's fine. Um, Paris Campbell had a nice catch today. Uh, you see, like, a lot of the young new guys getting opportunities. I know John Michael Schmitz ran with the ones today, and then Ben Bredesen ran with the ones yesterday, so he's getting eased in. Um, you know, you love to see that, some nice defensive plays. But, you know, I'll start out here talking about Darren Waller and, and Daniel Jones, right? Darren Waller and Daniel Jones have the capacity to be a dynamic duo for the Giants in 2023. The truth is they could be the best thing we've seen in a long time on this team. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe this is probably a hot take, but it's the only one that seems recent Eli and Odell that that was the best combination that we've seen probably in the last couple of years and since then it's been nothing we haven't had any real duos in my opinion I think that Waller and uh, Jones could be a really good duo together I think they could really make some noise do some damage and as long as Waller stays healthy I think this offense stands a chance um, against a lot of teams a lot of good defenses Waller has been unguardable at practice and we've talked about him extensively you know look think of it this way Waller's 31 years old maybe a little bit older but Travis Kelsey is 34 so you tell me I think Waller has more than enough athleticism speed um, and quality left to give the Giants he just I don't think he really wanted to be with the Raiders anymore. I don't think he liked management. I don't think he wanted to be there. And I think he's kind of found a second home, um, a second purpose with the Giants. And I think he's kind of rejuvenated and, and revitalized, ready to help this team, you know, win games. And I really like the quote that Dexter Lawrence just gave today. He was like, I'm tired of building. I want to just do. I want to get. I want to start doing and not building. That tells me this team is ready to win now. This team is ready to compete now. They don't think they're building anymore. You keep a lot of your guys. You extend Thomas, Dexter Lawrence, Daniel Jones. You keep Saquon. You add new pieces via the draft and free agency. I think this team is is more than ready to win a couple playoff games. You know, for a championship, I don't know, but I think a couple playoff games is more than probable. Or not maybe not probable, but more than realistic to consider since we beat the Vikings last year. We had one of the best offenses in the game. Um, you know, in in the playoffs. So. And that was with a bad roster for what it's worth. So, you know, you're looking at the offense early on. Waller's been catching. No one can guard him. Linebackers, corners, DBs in general have not been able to size him up. He's too big. He's too fast. He's too good of a route runner. He's going to act as a receiver in this system, guys. You know, you look at what he's done in the past. Last year he played in the slot, I think, about 60% of his snaps. Uh, maybe even more than that, honestly. It could have been, it could have been 70 plus, I forget. But, you know, you look at how the Giants can use him. You have your in-line tight end and Darren, and, uh, Daniel Bellinger, who's also having a really good camp so far. Um, and, you know, he has some of the best hands you can see today. They literally reported today he wasn't dropping anything that went his way. Everything that was thrown to Daniel Bellinger, he hauled in. He has some of the best hands on the team. Um, Darren Waller, they don't need him as a tight end. He can literally be your jumbo slot. He can go play on the boundary. He can play anywhere you need him to. He can move around, bunch formations, put him in motion. He's got everything you want um, in an elite you know, pass catching kind of jumbo slot option or, or, or tight end. And, you know, I think being calling him a tight end is, is you know, just an add on to what he's capable of doing because he's so much more than that. Um, and Daniel Jones has been throwing the rock pretty well. You see him slinging the ball. Like he's throwing it. Apparently he's throwing it harder than he ever has. Cole Beasley was said he's accurate, good arm. You know, he's throwing to right where he needs to go. And Cole Beasley is another guy that's been having a tremendous practice um, today and yesterday. So, Anthony, when you're looking at those guys, specifically Waller, you know, how excited does that make you? Because as long as he stays healthy, uh, stays healthy, this offense stands to gain a lot of value from him. 
Well, I mean, I'm thrilled by everything that we're hearing about Darren Waller because every single reporter, every single fan is saying that there's no one on the Giants defense that can cover Darren Waller. And I don't think that's any fault of the defense in and of itself. I just think Darren Waller is that freaking good. He's been out there making plays. He had, I think, three or four touchdowns in yesterday's practice. Not sure what the count is on today's practice just yet, but I'm sure he found his way into the end zone. I know he made a bunch of catches over the middle of the field. And that's something that the Giants, you're going to you're gonna have to expect that they're going to be attacking the middle of the field a lot. Lot this upcoming season because that's where Darren Waller really strives right across the middle of the field between those two safeties Daniel Jones is going to be ripping humming the ball into those spots to Darren Waller and that's the key word that I want to talk about humming Cole Beasley said that Daniel Jones, his passes were humming after yesterday's practice. Art Stapleton of NorthJersey.com said he's never seen Daniel Jones throw the ball harder in yesterday's practice than he had um, at any time prior. So it's really exciting stuff that we're hearing about those two players in particular. Daniel Jones looks really confident going into this year. You know, he even mentioned it when we had minicamp, OTAs, all that. He said that he feels more confident. He said that he feels way less pressure. Now that he's gotten paid, he feels like he can just go out there and do his thing and play football. He said that months ago, and now we're seeing that in July, right? We're watching him practice, and he looks cool as a cucumber. He's chill. He's throwing the ball harder than ever. He's taking shots downfield. He's slinging it with some big balls downfield. Pause. But he's playing some really good football right now, and he's ready to spread out this offense and start throwing those dimes to Darren Waller and everybody else. We saw Isaiah Hodgins get on the board. We saw Paris Campbell get on the board. We saw Cole Beasley, as you mentioned, Alex. Everybody's getting involved with the game plan. Colin Johnson, as well, had a really nice touchdown in the back of the end zone during one-on-one drills um, against uh, Deontay Banks. So we're seeing all of these receivers step up, but what, why we're seeing all of these receivers make these plays, in my opinion, is because Daniel Jones has been surgical out there. Like everything that we're seeing from him, his passes have more heat on them. They have more accuracy. They have really good timing. He has really good timing already with Cole Beasley. I watched them uh, a, a clip of them scoring a touchdown together, and Beasley, as soon as he broke from his route, Daniel Jones had the ball out in the perfect spot. So Already, you're seeing him gel with some of these guys, start to mesh with a few of these guys. And for what it's worth, Jalen Hyatt, yes, he did have to come out for a little bit in yesterday's practice, got a little bit uh, of heat exhaustion. But he also had a really spectacular touchdown uh, out of the backfield, I believe it was. It was an end around, so he started off in the wide position, gets the ball in the backfield, turned up field, and scored himself a touchdown. His speed was on full display. So what we're seeing from these first two days of practice, the Giants have a lot of weapons now compared to what Daniel Jones has ever had to play with in the past. He has a lot more tools at his disposal to help this team win games. A lot more players with sheer talent, and Darren Waller being the number one that stands out. Nobody's able to guard Darren Waller at practice right now. If he stays healthy this upcoming season, Season, that should be a theme that continues throughout the regular season because six foot six, four four five speed from the tight end position, but really from any position. As you said, Alex, he could play out wide. He's going to be featured probably primarily in the slot, and then of course we'll see him play his natural position of tight end. But Daniel Bellinger playing well. That's a big plus, having two tight ends. Uh, we, If you look at the stats on it, Daniel Jones thrives in two tight end sets. 12 personnel, that's his bread and butter. He really likes to have two tight ends out there, and now the Giants can use their personnel in a way where Darren Waller is a tight end, but he's a flex tight end moving all over the place. And then he still has his security blanket underneath with Daniel Bellinger, who looks ripped. He looks like an absolute Hulk out there on the football field, on the practice field, at least. And I'm really excited to see how he, how big of a step forward he takes in year two. We know that Bellinger was playing really well before that eye socket injury that knocked him down a couple pegs, but he came back and he finished the season strong. Um, I think he scored a touchdown in the playoffs against Minnesota. I might be mistaken, but Bellinger is a kid that I really, really like. I think that he's super talented. And going into this year, we mentioned this like a month ago, Alex, having Darren Waller on this team does not hold Daniel Bellinger back at all. It actually probably opened things up and puts him in position to have an even better upcoming season because now he's not the focal point from the tight end position. He's the secondary option, and that allows him to get open easier, face easier competition, and play more of a role where he just kind of sits down in the middle field and collects those dump offs from Daniel Jones while Darren Waller just runs silly willy all over the defenses. So I'm really excited by everything that I'm seeing. Just had to recap all of the offensive stuff that I was seeing, Alex, because you asked me how excited I was. Man, as you can tell, I am very excited. Daniel Jones is what's getting me so excited, though. He looks confident, and he looks surgical out there. But let's talk about the defense a little bit, Alex. There was a few defensive backs who kind of stood out. We're not going to see much from offensive line, defensive line, until they put the pads on. But thankfully, that's happening on Tuesday. So I can't wait for Tuesday's practice so we can see some of those offensive, defensive line guys get going. But we saw a lot from the defensive backs in today's practice in particular. Trey Hawkins with an interception in one-on-ones against Bryce Ford Wheaton. We saw Deontay Banks had a pass breakup on Isaiah Hodgins and Xavier McKinney with a diving interception. So Alex, 
those guys in the secondary, you're starting to see a, a little bit of a increase in productivity compared to yesterday. How are you feeling about those guys in the secondary and really um, kind of as they continue to face this new offense with all this new talent, what challenges are you looking to see them overcome? Yeah, um, I just want to throw in one last thing about the tight ends really quickly in that Joe Shane used a hunt, turned a weakness, a, a, a suppose it was really it was really a bad weakness, the tight end position, Kyle Rudolph, all the guys that we've been rotating there. He turned the 100th overall pick and the 112th overall pick into Daniel Bellinger and Darren Waller. Using two mid-round picks to turn a really bad weakness into a really good strength. Tell me that. That sounds like good GMing if you ask me. But, you know, heading over to the defensive back side of things, uh, Banks had his fair share of struggles today as well. You know, he's a rookie. He's going to have him. Um, he gave up a touchdown to Colin Johnson, tried to jam him at the line of scrimmage, and just got completely pushed aside. So, you know, learn something from that. That You, you have camp. You have practice for a reason. You know, you, you learn something from um, a veteran guy like Colin Johnson coming off an of ACL tear, trying to make the roster, trying to put in some good reps. And he, he won a really good one, and it was a beautiful throw by Daniel Jones in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Uh, but he also had a really nice pass break up on Isaiah Hodgins. And, you know, he, he read the quarterback all the way, turned around, saw the ball, located it, hit it down. Um, you can see his speed and athleticism. It's very evident when you're watching him on the on the field. You're watching him through the TV or through the you know Twitter clips, whatever it might be. His makeup speed is very legit. Like he, when he realizes he's beat, he turns on the Jets, man. I mean, he got on that Colin Johnson rep that he got completely pushed aside. He turned around and started hauling ass into the back of the end zone, and he got beat, obviously. But man, did he catch up pretty quickly, like. You saw him turn it on for a split second and then just kind of, he was like, all right, you know, I, I'm beat. I'm just going to slow down. But he, you could see that that burst is legit. You know, we know this for a fact. He has the third highest DB athleticism score in the past decade. He had the highest athleticism score by a significant margin in this draft class um, among cornerbacks. So, you know, we're going to see that pop up pretty frequently. Xavier McKinney, you know, I, I saw him. He gave up a catch on Daniel Bellinger. Where Daniel Jones freaking ripped it in there. Oh, my God. I think it was going like 60 miles an hour. Uh, Bellinger, ridiculous hands, as we said before. Um, McKinney gave up a, a completion there, but had, a, like you said, a nice diving interception later on in practice, the highlight of the day. Um, you know, Nick, Nick McLeod, who's kind of been transitioning over to safety, went back to cornerback, had a couple of nice reps today. Um, you know, Darnell Holmes got beat up a lot. And, you know, this is another kind of following the narrative we kind of talked about a couple of weeks ago that Darnell Holmes is really in a bad spot right now. If he doesn't have a really, really good camp, he's going to get cut. They're going to save that two two and a half million dollars guaranteed that he has right now, and um, they save all of it pretty much if they cut him. So he needs uh, uh, the only other option is he takes a massive pay cut and bets on himself. Otherwise, he's going to get cut if he doesn't pick it up. Um, he was beat up a lot today, and um, you know this has kind of been. He, I remember last year to get a couple of uh, practices with interceptions, like, like three straight practices with interceptions. We were really excited about it, uh, but the coverage ability is is just not there. Like he. He struggles in coverage. He's good against the run at times. He has good vision. Uh, but, you know, he, he his fundamentals sometimes uh, fail him, and I think that that's something he needs to work on. Hopefully he can turn it around. You know, he's a great dude. I, I really root for the guy. But he's certainly fighting against himself right now. Um, luckily for him, we don't have that many slot options. I know Aaron Robinson, I think, is on the pup list. You know, you got Cordell Flott. You need to have backups, right? If Cordell Flott starting, you need to have a backup. Maybe Darnay's the backup there. Um, you know, you have Bobby McCain who can play slot, play free safety, strong safety, whatever you need him to do. Um, you know, so there is some value to be had at that position with a veteran. But, you know, overall, the secondary hat was better today, but it wasn't – they did have a lot of situations where they, where they you know, got beat up a little bit. But that, that's expected. A lot of these designed plays are meant to beat them. Like, if you're a cornerback against – if you're going 1v1, you know, that, that's the drill. You're 1v1 you're probably going to lose. Like, you're at a, a serious dis disadvantage. Trey Hawkins, though, against Bryce Ford, we know that 1v1, read him like a book, man. Really good leverage, kept his butt down, you know, read his hips the whole way, tracked it, turned around and picked it off right beneath the goal post. Like, it was pitch perfect. It was, it was perfect. Um, Trey Hawkins... He has all the tangible traits. That's a guy to watch out for, my friends. Uh, Bryce Ford Wheaton had a pretty good day yesterday. You know, today, a couple uh, moments where he, he flashed some potential, but, you know, the interception definitely stood out. Um, but, man, I got to say, Trey Hawkins, we know he's capable. He has really good athletic traits, really good tangible traits. He just needs more experience. You know, he's coming out of Old Dominion, smaller school. Give him time to, to develop. Give him time to kind of find himself in the NFL game. Um, improve his fundamentals. This could be a good player down the line, guys. Keep an eye on Trey Hawkins as someone that develops nicely over the next couple months. Yeah, and I mean, that Trey Hawkins interception that we saw in the one-on-one against Bryce Ford Wheaton, that was just 
beautiful. Like, that was perfect coverage. That's exactly what you want to see. He goes up there, gets the interception in the end zone. But there's one player in particular, Alex, that I want to talk about, and that's Justin Pinnock. Because according to all the beat reporters, this is the guy that the Giants are trying to push into that starting safety role that Julian Love departed from. You know, we've talked a lot this offseason about Dane Belton. Haven't heard much about him at training camp just yet. We've talked about Bobby McCain as well. Also haven't heard really anything about Bobby McCain. But what we keep hearing about from training camp is Justin Pinnock, who could be moving his way into the starting lineup. A little bit of a surprise name here. Wasn't expecting that as we got as we prepared for training camp. But now that we're here in camp, the Giants seem to really like him. It looks like the coaching staff is trying to push him into the starting lineup. We'll see if he can continue to perform well at training camp. But he has a good summer of practices. That's your Julian Love replacement right there is Pinnock. So what are your thoughts on that, Alex? You know, it, it kind of like... We do have a bit of a positional battle brewing here, but we haven't heard much from these other guys. We just keep hearing about Pinnock. I mean, look, they apparently they liked him last year. Apparently he was a guy, I know he got injured, um, but they want to give him a chance to win that starting strong safety job. And I'm for it, man. You know, let let this guy compete. Let this guy win a job alongside Xavier McKinney. We don't losing Julian Love at strong safety is a blow. You know, now we have, you know, Pinnock, you have Javarius Owens, um, you have some younger guys, you know, you have Bobby McCain, he's a little bit small for my liking at strong safety. Um, you have Nick McLeod, they're trying to make a little bit of a transition with see if he can kind of be that utility man. Um, this is a guy that has a chance to win this job. Like I'd say Jason Pinnock has an advantage right now. He just has to have a good camp. Like he, he could win this job outright, has to have a good camp, has to stay healthy. Um, I know he was injured a bunch of times last year, so I think that that really held him down to a degree. But he's a player that I do think has some upside. I think, you know, give him a chance to showcase his best self. We may see something there. I, th I think that, you know, with that specific position battle, it's wide open for the taking. There's no one that I could say like has that job locked down for now. Yeah, I'd like to hear something about Dane Belton and uh, Bobby McCain in the coming days. I want to see Belton really take that step forward and maybe try and grab that role. Um, and also, for what it's worth, it's Jason Pinnock, not Justin. My bad, guys. But Jason Pinnock really standing out at training camp, and I'm excited to see if he can earn that job like the um, like the Giants are hoping for him to. But we'll see if Dane Belton can start making some plays here. I like the things that you said about Darnay Holmes, though, because the more that I think about this player, the more I get confused as to whether or not he's safe from getting cut or if he's just right there on the bubble. Because, like you said, kind of thin at that position. Yes, we can roll with Cordell Flott as the starting slot cornerback, but who's playing behind him? Especially if Aaron Robinson, maybe he doesn't get healthy by the start of the regular season. Then I feel like you're forced to keep Darnay Holmes on this roster, which is a situation the Giants definitely don't want to find themselves in. And maybe they look to the waiver wire to find the better replacement. You know, that's something that can become an option once they get to preseason. But Darnay Holmes really does need to step up his game to ensure that he keeps that roster spot. The last thing that he should be doing here is banking on the fact that another player is injured for him to keep his job. Because once that player is healthy, they're going to just ship Darnay Holmes out. So I think that Holmes needs to start stepping up here. But lots of good talking points about the Giants right now. Haven't heard too much about the linebackers other than the fact, though, that Darian Beavers is healthy. And I think that's a big deal because we have some players who got injured last offseason towards the end of the of the summer period, towards the end of the preseason, who still aren't back yet, right? Like Marcus McKethan, still not back. He's on the PUP list. Darian Beavers tears his ACL right at the end of the preseason. He's here. He's fully healthy, and he's playing well. Alex, when you're looking at that LB2 position, right, it's wide open for the taking. You got Micah McFadden competing for it, and now you have Darian Beavers, who's healthy. How excited are you by the fact that he's out there with a chip on his shoulder? I love it, man. I'm so excited to see what this LB2 position provides because, you know, draw Davis going down, one less competitor. Maybe they bring in some support that we talked about a couple options a couple days ago. But Micah McFadden and Darian Beavers, this is going to be a straight-up battle. I think this is one of going to be one of, the more, one of the more exciting battles that we see this offseason, um, this training camp and preseason for the Giants. Those two guys, like... It, you know the winner. The, the, any, either of those two could win the could win the battle. Um, Beavers coming off the ACL tear. You know who knows what he can really do. He showed some promise and some flash. If I'm going to be honest, I think McFadden has a pretty sizable advantage right now based on the fact that he has the experience. About 450 defensive snaps last year. Apparently, according to Wake Martindale, he came in a lot better. Like whatever he did this past off season, Wink Martindell noted that it was a big improvement. So. Um, it could have been film work, could have been, you know, changing his body up, maybe uh, losing a little weight and, you know, improving his, um, I don't know, maybe his agility, but he's a straight line thumper. Like that's the way that Mike McFadden plays the game. He is a North South thumper, doesn't have the best lateral, uh, mobility, but man, does he, when he commits, he's a freaking bowling ball and, um, he had a 9% missed tackle rate last year. 
pretty decent games at times. He's not very good in coverage. He gave up an 81.5% completion rate, so maybe a portion of his game that he wants to improve a little bit on. But I will say this right now. I'd say McFadden has the advantage, but don't sleep on Darian Beavers. Good player. You know, we saw what he could do early last year in preseason before the injury. He's got really good vision, impeccable vision, good football IQ. He's one of those guys that finds himself in the right place at the right time, um, and it makes a big difference. So I feel as though it's going to be a really fun position battle right now. I'm leaning McFadden, but... You know, it's it's so marginal that I think like Beavers could easily steal that job from him. Yeah, I think he could. I'm also leading McFadden, but let's keep in mind that Beavers, towards the end of that preseason last year, he was the leading man for the job, surprisingly. McFadden kind of had to get thrust into the position. Maybe he wasn't completely ready, so he struggled during his rookie season, but he played that position because Beavers was injured. So keep that in mind. This is going to be a really interesting position battle, and there's quite a few of them. I'm excited to see what happens once the pads come on at left guard as well. I want to see John Michael Schmidt start getting all those first team reps at center, and then just see Joshua Zito and Ben Bredesen battle it out at left guard, but that's more something that we will be looking forward to next week. But for now, we are going to continue to update you on everything from these padless practices over the next few days right here on Fireside Giants. So make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review and go ahead and follow us on every social media channel at Fireside Giants. And of course, we will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one and let's go Giants. (music) 